What do you think of when you see an ambulance rushing to an emergency? What would you think if that ambulance was headed for a Norfolk Southern work site? What would you think if it was your work site? Maybe you would think about what could have been done to avoid this accident. Maybe you would think about safety. Maybe you should have thought about it sooner. What do you think of when you hear the words job briefing? I feel like a job briefing just a means of eliminating confusion, just letting people know what their assigned tasks are on a given job. Tells you what we're going to be doing, explaining what we got to do. Job briefing is something that lets us know what we're going to be doing that day. Job briefing is uh, explaining the work that's going to be done and uh, explain to everyone that kind of track time you got, protection, and the dangers that may be involved in it. What do you think? Were these comments correct? No. Were these comments incorrect? No. Then what is a job briefing? A job briefing is not a thing. It is a process. The dictionary defines a process as a continuous action, operation, or a series of changes taking place in a definite manner. All of the comments that these men made could be part of a job briefing, but they are not a job briefing. Since we have defined a job briefing as a process, and the dictionary defines a process as a continuous operation, a job briefing never ends until the job is completed. This video will take an inside look at good job briefings for three types of work processes. B&B, Line Maintenance, and TNS. Before we begin, it's important to understand that good job briefings don't just happen. They are planned in advance. The first job briefing we will view deals with the task of replacing wooden bridge spans. The B&B gang will be working with an AFE gang to do this job. All right, man, this morning, the maintenance and AFE gang is going to be working together setting a new timber span. So Mike. Barry, I want each of you to handle your respective part of the job briefing. Tom, I'd like you to handle the safety meeting. I'll be reading the rule for the day, the work-related rule, and the focus of the week. When we get to the job site and we have our job briefing at that time, I'll sign Mark and Vince to back the trucks up. All right. Since we're going to be cutting timber spans, who are we going to use for the chainsaw? We've been using Ralph and Steve, so we, they know what's going on. We use them. All right. At the job briefing, I want to make sure that everyone knows their job, the equipment they're going to be using, and also whatever personal protective equipment they need to be using. The morning safety meeting, lineup, and exercises are usually held at the location where the workmen report to duty. During this meeting, people can be assigned to specific jobs concerning transporting the gang and material to the job site. Okay, man, this morning we're going to let Mark and Vince be responsible for backing their trucks up. Uh, let's discuss our route to the job site. We'll be going north on 23. To Alderman 58, to Appalachia, be going cut left at the light. 68 West, shouldn't be no problem because of the signal there. And we need to remember, uh, got a construction zone. We'll be going through uh, on Highway 23. And also, let's, uh, let's remember the school zones. Watch your speed limit, look out for the kids. Okay, man, let's all do our exercises, get loosened up, get ready to go. Some of the information that should be covered in detail during the job briefing may also be covered during the morning safety meeting or lineup, but it will usually be very general in nature. It's important to understand that the morning safety meeting is not a job briefing. The job briefing will take place at the work site. This is NSPMB former Mike Bradley at Andover to the NS Andover operator. Over. Okay, Mr. Brady. When everyone arrives at the work site, a job briefing is held. A good job briefing should always take place at the work site. 
Here, all aspects of the job to be performed should be discussed in detail. Okay, listen up, men. Today we're going to be replacing span number three. I've got track time between Andover and milepost 3TB with no restrictions. Andover's informed me that we're going to have between four and five hours track time, so that should give us plenty of time to do our work safely and get everything wrapped up. Okay, my game's going to be pulling the spikes, we'll be getting the plates off, jacking the track up. Of course, we're going to be using our truck to do this with the hydraulic tools. Uh, the AFE gang will let you guys cut and remove the old spans. My gang will be hooking the new spans, send them out to you. Uh, the AFE gang will let y'all grout the north end of the new spans in, and my gang grout the south end in. We all work together getting the track back in service today. Now, I've checked the job site, and everything's in the same condition as it was when we left yesterday. Everything's in a safe order. Once the overall job has been reviewed, the men should be encouraged to discuss each step in detail, covering who will do each function, what tools to use, what hazards exist, and what safety precautions need to be taken. This should not be a lecture by the foreman. Everyone should participate. Rather than give the information to the men, the foreman should ask questions and the men should give him the information. That way he will know that they understand all aspects of the job. Okay, let's talk about how we're going to do this job. My gang is going to take the truck up to the North Crossing, put it on the rail back down to the bridge and start unspiking everything. So what all do we need to look out for? Who will be letting us know that the truck's approaching the bridge? I'll be on the uh, ground signaling the truck back. I'll stop him short of the bridge until everyone is in the clear. Okay, are there any other concerns? This bridge, it's over 12 feet high. So remember to put our fall protection on. We always keep our uh, fall rescue plan in the front seat of the truck, so I'm assuming that's where it's at now, right? Yeah, it's, it's still in the front seat of the truck. We'll be using the uh, hydraulic spike puller, so we need to watch out for the hose stretch across the bridge so nobody trips over it. And we need to stay off under the bridge in case we drop spikes or plates. We'll be removing the plates at the end of the bridge, so watch, watch how we lift. And when we jack the rail up, make sure we block it off and remove the jacks. Okay. All right. Anybody got any questions, any comments? Looks like everyone understands this. So what's next? Who will be giving signals for the crane? Jim Murray will be the signal man. We'll remove the old tires with the backhoe, so stay out of the swing path. Steve and I are going to cut the old span out. We're going to check the saws, make sure all of them's sharp, gassed up, good, safe working order. we got to be sure and use our personal protection equipment, Steve. When we're sawing the bridge out, everybody needs to watch out for sawdust. Before we make our final cut, we need to make sure everybody's in the clear. Uh, Dave and I, we will be hooking the old span, so Jim, make sure we're in the clear before the crane makes the lift. We'll be using Ronnie and Doug to hook the new spans, and stay clear until they're set, and make sure you use the tag line and the, their balance when you pick them up. And we also need to watch out for handling slings around the rail, watch out for pinch points, uh, talk to one another real good before we set the load down, and uh, by all means, stay out under the load. Okay, Vince, how about the grout? He will be using grout, so we need to use respirators. The MSDS sheet says we need to use rubber gloves and earn the two boxes usually. Okay, we'll be putting the track back next. Has anybody got any comments? We need to set the spikes so they don't shoot. We'll be working in a confined area, so let's keep the walkways clear and watch out for one another. Okay, man, does anybody have any questions about who's gonna do what or how we're gonna get this job done? Okay, let's go to work. Hey, Barry, this ain't gonna work. We got too many people giving signals. Come on, guys, we're gonna have to have a new job briefing. This was an example of a good job briefing. But even so, the foreman had to stop the work and hold a mini briefing to assure the job was done efficiently and safely. Okay, everybody go back to work. This time, a line maintenance gang will be changing out a stock rail and a switch point. Okay, men, today we'll be changing out a stock rail and a switch point inside the plant at Beverly. The material that we will be using is already located at the job site. In order for us to do this job, our maintenance gang will be working along with a signal maintainer and a welder. The backhoe will be responsible for handling all the material. Okay, Dwight, you'll be handling the backhoe, right? That's right, boss. Okay, we'll need someone to give Dwight signals on the backhoe. Tommy, how about you doing that? Okay. 
I'll be driving one of the trucks and Gibson will be driving the other. We'll take our usual route to Beverly. We'll take Rugledge Pike to Parker Road, then to Love's Creek, then to Greenway Drive. Then we'll take a left at the TVA plant and then we'll proceed into the plant at Beverly. Okay, are there any safety concerns we need to talk about before traveling to the job site? We'll be traveling busy roads and there'll be close clearance as we enter TVA. We'll be making a left turn on the Greenway Drive. We need to assist the truck driver in observing traffic. And we're also going to be in a congested area. We all need to be aware of that. Okay. When we get to the job site, we'll have our job briefing. When we get there, let's all look around and see whether there are any more safety concerns. Okay, anything else? At the work site, the men finish up their exercises and Foreman Corley begins the on-site job briefing. Okay, we'll talk about what we're going to do today. I have track time, which is a 23A between Beverly, including the switches at Beverly, until released. Our restrictions are none. This 23A was repeated to Corley at 8.29 a.m. Does everybody understand the type of track protection we have? Okay, now we'll talk about the removal and installation of our stock rail and switch point. The first thing we'll do is disconnect the old stock rail and the old switch point. Next, we will set the old switch point out followed by the old stock rail. Then we will come back with the new stock rail followed by the new switch point. Then we'll make any connections that will be necessary and adjustments also. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, Jim and I are going to start unloading the tools. Uh, which end do you want to start on? Let's start on the east end. Okay. Okay, Dwight, you'll be handling in the backhoe for us today, and Tommy will be giving you the signals. Is there any safety precautions we need to be thinking about? All right, I need to know that everybody's in the clear, so the rest of you guys let me know if you need to move into the line of fire. Okay, Jeff, you'll be handling the cutting and torching for us today. Are there any safety concerns you can think of? To begin with, I'll be wearing all my safety gear. And with my mask down and I'm welding, I can't see anybody. Also, you need to be aware of sparks coming off the rail. You need to stay in the clear and help me watch for brush fires. Also, bolt heads may fly several feet when I cut them loose, especially if the track's under a lot of tension. So stand in the clear. This is so obvious, you may not think it's worth mentioning, but don't look at the flame mark Jeff as well and it can damage your eyes. Listen, David, when it comes down to safety and keeping everyone from getting hurt, nothing is too obvious. Besides, it's the little things that jump out and bite you. Okay, anything else? Signal Maintainer Ridener will be working with us today. Do you have any safety concerns? Yes, I'll need to take the power off the power switch and also when we start the grinding to replace our Cadwell bonds, the men will need to watch out for the sparks. Okay, this morning during our lineup, I asked everyone to come out on the job site and look around for any situations that might present a safety hazard. Did anybody find anything? Well, we're gonna have a pretty big crew today, and judging from the material we're gonna be handling in such small space, it could get crowded. We need to be aware of what's going on around us, watch out for ourselves, and watch out for our fellow workers. Okay, let's go to work. We have identified a job briefing as an ongoing process, and we have seen two on-site job briefings with two different gangs. But a job briefing does not always require everyone's participation. Jim, I need you to help me carry this drill over here and set up to drill this rail. We'll lift it on the count of three. All right, be careful crossing the rail, Dave. You All go right. first. One, two, three. What we just saw was also a job briefing. It concerned a smaller job, unloading a drill, that was taking place within the overall job. A job briefing is any time you stop to think about and plan how you're going to perform an operation. Job briefings are designed to make you think about it sooner. Even when you're working by yourself, you need to stop and think about how you're going to do the job before you start. At the time, it may seem insignificant, but it isn't. When it comes to safety, nothing is insignificant. If you're doing the same type of work every day, it's easy to overlook small things. 
and it's usually something small that causes an incident or an accident. Let's look in on a third job briefing that is in the early planning stage. The task this time is surfacing several miles of track, including a switch. 220, track time right between New Line and Douglas. All right, so slow orders out. Got two trains to get by, one east, one west. Everything will be by around 7.15. Thank you, sir. All right, first of all this morning, I got the slow order out between the 2.14 and 2.20. When I get the time, we'll get between New Line and Douglas. We got two trains to get by this morning, one eastbound and one westbound. RP, how many ties we got going that first switch this morning? Exactly, 30. We need to send somebody up to the switch to check out the switch location and make sure that all our switch ties are in place, RP. All right. I also need to bring the fuel truck around ahead of us. I'll take care of that. If you I get the truck driver to haul some spikes around. I know you have Bob called in. I want somebody to cover for him today, too. All right. That'll just about do it. Let's get and go to work. Uh, Hugh, I was talking to Frank Cooper on front tie crane yesterday, and he says we're running 40 to 50 ties short. Might need to have the local people bring in some, please. All right, Doug, I'll take care of you and send me out there. Okay, and I'll get with Snake, and we should have the spikes at 219 mile post about 10 o'clock. That's pretty good. We're better about that time. I also need to bring, when he finishes that, he needs to bring lunch to the White Pine Cross. Bill, you take care of that for me. All right, we can do that. How's your paint running on the back, Mike? I could use some. Uh, uh, Bill, have Snake bring in some paint and bands. Okay, and it's a little cold outside. There might be some problems on the rail. Need to make sure the operators are aware of it so they can increase the stop distances. Let's also make sure everybody makes a run and break check before they come out of the hole this morning. We've got about three or four road crosses to go across back out this morning. We get all the people we can flag it on there. Yeah, we need to remind the operators so they'll be prepared to stop safe today. Thanks, Mike. Let's all have a good, safe day. While on duty, employees must not engage in any activity that will interfere with or distract their attention from their work. Thanks, Chip. Okay, men, this morning, first thing, we got a switch coming up at us. Let's make sure we inspect all of our hand tools before we get up to the switch. Does anybody have any questions or comments this morning? Yes, uh, Mr. Dunn, we need to take extra careful, be extra careful, and expect a change in the road conditions. Whoever's driving out there, the bus, the trucks, whatever. So we got this river up here we got to cross. I always expect fog out there, especially this time of the year, this time of the morning. It looks like it could be a sudden change in the weather. Just any time it could rain, start raining or whatever. So we need to keep a good distance between the other traffic on the road. Just be real careful getting out there. Thanks, Richard. Because of the large number of workmen on the super gang, the supervisor and foreman for each work group conduct their own job briefing after the morning exercises are completed. As y'all's noticed, the curves we're working in, there's a lot of greasers out and uh, there's a lot of grease on the rail. Uh, how may that affect our work today? We need to maintain a safe distance and we need to be extremely careful around these crossings. You guys be operating the jacks. Make sure you set your jacks properly and the handles are taken out. We're going to be working in stiff curves today, men. What should we be aware of? Well, we're going to be using 18 inch plates. You need to be aware of the extra weight. Uh, use proper lifting techniques to avoid any back injuries. Uh, Jody, you need to blow the horn before you back up because we'll be pulling plates behind you. Okay, you need to keep your men in a safe working distance behind me. When the tie handlers get to the switch location, there'll be a lot of people in activity there. We need to make sure we stay in the clear. Does anybody have any other safety concerns? Our track time today will be between Douglas and New Line like Mr. Dunn lined us up this morning. And now, what do we need to be aware of to do our job safely today? In the switch, make sure the plates are in place, and before we let the jacks down, make sure everyone's in the clear. And when loading spikes, make sure all, all the materials around you is clear. When you get done loading spikes, you throw your spike cage up on top of the machine, make sure they don't come back off in your face. Okay, uh, Paul, what can we be aware of around the walking spiker today? Be aware of those bent spikes. When you place the crowbar on the bent spike, it don't necessarily mean you can pull it. The head could pop off it or either it could break. So be aware of that. Y'all need to stay a good distance away from that plate broom because you could get hit with rock. You always should know where your downtime man is. And he needs to stay out of the gauge of the track unless he's working. All right, you need to keep your walkways and your cabs clear and accessible. If you have any breakdowns, you need to use your lockout tagout procedures. 
on this grade we're working on, we need to have all our pins and cotter pins in place. Because safety is a combination of attitude, habit, knowledge, and performance, Norfolk Southern has established a mandatory policy for conducting job briefings. These job briefings, when properly held, help shape attitude because they emphasize safety. Better work attitudes are fostered when everyone knows their company, their supervisors, and their fellow workers care enough about everyone's safety to discuss it before every job. Also holding a job briefing on site before every job helps build a safety habit. It causes everyone to think sooner about safety. The more you do it, the more habit forming it becomes. Some habits are bad and some are good. This is a good one. Job briefings also distribute knowledge. Obviously, the more someone knows about how to do a job, the more likely they will do it correctly and safely. And doing the job correctly the first time improves performance. We have seen three different job briefings. They were all planned and executed properly. But even the best job briefing cannot predict the unexpected. No job briefing could have predicted that this driver would try to beat the equipment across the crossing. So the unexpected becomes a personal responsibility, your personal responsibility. Good job briefings help you understand and prepare for the things that you can control. But you also need to realize that events that are beyond your control can happen at any time. It is your responsibility to do everything you can to keep these events from causing an incident or injury. In either case, if a rule violation occurs, everyone must be made aware of it and a new job briefing must be held. Man, as y'all can see, we've had an incident up there. Hope he's hit a car just crossing up here with two rule violations. And you all know when a rule violation comes about, we have to have a rebriefing, another briefing. That's rule number 814, 815. Remember, no job is so important, no service so urgent, that we cannot take the time to perform our work safely. Safety doesn't just happen, it's planned. Planning doesn't happen unless you think about it. Good job briefings make you think about it sooner. And thinking about it sooner is the Norfolk Southern thoroughbred way.